Now, if I was to ask you what you thought was the most important part in this engine, any engine, every engine out there in any car, what is the single most important part? What part interacts with the most other parts that affects the whole ability to make power? Post it in the comments just right now before I tell you. Okay, I'll give you a second. A lot of people are going to be surprised and probably argue with me to find out this simple, humble valve, the most important part of the entire engine. And let me explain that to you. The humble little valve, its only job in life is to open and to shut. But that is the most important part of the entire engine right there. Don't be fooled. Now, why is opening and shutting this valve so important? Well, every time this valve opens and shuts, you're creating a pulse. A pulse of air trying to get in and a pulse of air that's coming back out. Every time it opens, air is getting shoved in. And every time it closes, the air hits the back of the valve and starts making its way back out. This is called sonic tuning, I believe. Hmm, I'm starting to think it's called port tuning, or resonance tuning? There's a word for it. For the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, so whenever the intake valve shuts, a column of air gets pushed back up the runner. Then when the intake valve opens again, all this air stops changes direction, and shoves even more air down into the cylinder. And that's why the length of your runner plays a big role in how much power you make and where. Short runners, high RPM power. Long runners, lower RPM power. Why? Because the short runner has a shorter distance for that, you know, wave to hit the back of the valve, make its way up before the valve opens again. Long runner, lower RPM, more time for the air to travel up, grab more, and travel back down, lower RPM. And not only that, not only does your intake length have a big role to play, your intake volume, the actual size, how much air is in that intake runner, has a huge role to play too. And the size of your valve, your valve is a big giant, you know, door. The bigger the valve, the more air it's displacing every time it opens and shuts. And that's really the secret to making horsepower on a naturally aspirated motor. Trying to get this right. Trying to get all the, the volumes and the sizes and the lengths all perfect so you have that perfect wave coming in and out, optimizing your cylinder fill. Now I know that... This all sounds good in theory, and you can actually, you know, you get it, you know it, but can you truly visualize what is happening here? Let me try to visualize it for you. Okay, pretend this big door is your valve, and this room is your intake runner, right? So if you open this door, watch. See, every time I open and shut this door, it affects that door, right? Because it's affecting all the air in this room, all the air in the intake runner. And that's perfect representation of our door and its ability to affect all the air surrounding it. That door, opening and shutting, is pushing all of the air inside that room enough to where it actually opens the side door, opens and shuts it right but you gotta figure if the door was any smaller it would not displace enough air in order to open and shut that door or if the room was any bigger the amount of air it could displace and how much pressure it could put on that room would change to where it wouldn't be able to open and shut that door so the size of your door 
versus the size of the room has a huge impact on how they communicate with each other. So not only is the size of your door and the size of your room a big role to play and the length of your runner, but when does your door open and shut? And for how long and how violently and for, you know, that's got a huge role to play too. Now, a lot of people pick a camshaft for the wrong reasons. The camshaft is either because it sounds good or it's got a lot of lift or a lot of duration, right? People don't pick a camshaft based on the size of your door. They pick it because of other things they think is important. The size of your door should tell you what kind of camshaft you should run because the size of your door dictates what size your runner should be, what size your room should be, right? To get the perfect relation between your door and room, it has to, if you know what this size is, then you should be able to figure out what size that is. And these two things together should dictate what your camshaft is. Everything in your motor starts with this, the most important part of the entire engine. Even all the way down to what piston you run, because valve relieves, right? Pretty cool, huh? Now, how are you, you going to figure out exactly what dimension valve corresponds with what dimension? So how do you figure all this out? I have no clue. Nada. I, I have no idea. You want to figure something like that out? Go talk to David Vizard. He's got a YouTube channel, not David Vizard Performance. That's the old one. Go to the new one, David Vizard. The guy's a legend. Literally wrote the books that legends read. Okay? You got to have a brain like that to try to figure out the optimal angles and volumes and stuff like this. Us common car guys, that's out of our reach, right? Still good to know. So, you know, catch you next time. Oh, and uh, we still have another valve too, because everything that applies on the intake side also applies on the exhaust side. So uh, have fun with that.